Hey everyone, Will from Will Brett Design here. I've just started this new channel and I wanted to share with you some tips and tricks uh, as I go through working with Figma. Um, today the first video that I'm creating is a auto layout button. Uh, that's how to create buttons and button components within Figma um, and to build out your design system using this technique. So what we're going to do is first we're going to create a text label. So I've just held down T on my keyboard and then clicked in the screen to create a label and I'm going to call it button. So over here on the right we've got our text controls. Um, we can choose our font, our weight and our font size here and also our line height and some other options here too. So I'm going to set this to text align center and I'm going to leave everything else because these are the settings I actually quite like. So let's have a look at this button. So what we need to do now is add it to a frame or frame this button. And we can do that by right clicking and going add auto layout, or as you can see here, we can just do shift and A. So I've done that and now we have this frame. So there's a frame around the button and we can see over here on the auto layout panel that we've got 10 pixels spacing between the items. And we've also got uh, 10 pixels of padding and it's aligned to the top left. So I'm going to stick with those settings because they work for me in this example and I'm now going to give the frame a background colour. So down here if we add a fill and choose a nice colour I'm going to go with this red. So now we've got a nice background colour and we've got our text label. I don't think that black stands out very well on the red so I'm just going to change this to white. There we go, that's much nicer. Let's have a look at making these ang uh, these corners less sharp. Let's round them off a bit by four pixels using this up here. Corner radius tool, so there we go. We've now got a nice button with four pixel radius and our text. And because it's in an auto layout frame, it will actually grow with the button nicely. So there we go. So let's just go back to button. So that works really nicely. What can we do next? Well, to be able to use this throughout our documents, um, we need to create a component. So if we click on the frame itself, give it a name, let's call it button. We can now create a component using this item up here or the keyboard shortcut shown there. So now we've got this button. If we look at our assets folder, we've now got this new component, which is button, which is what we've created here. Let's just drag that in. So this is an instance of this component. So if I was to update the master component here, let's say, let's change this color to something like that. You can see it will also change all instances of that button. So let's turn it back to that. <clears throat> okay, that's really nice, but how can we expand upon this and make this even better? Well, we have variations of buttons. So we have a primary, secondary and tertiary button. So let's create those now. So I'm just going to hold down Alt and create a couple of, in fact, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to undo everything I've done. Okay, and this is no longer a component. So we're back to before we created it as a component. So I'm going to now create a few variations of this by holding down Alt and dragging. Here we go, we've got three buttons and let's name them. So over to our layers panel. So I'm going to do forward slash primary forward slash secondary and forward slash tertiary. There we go. So we've now named our buttons and we've added this forward slash which will become more apparent later. So let's now style our buttons. So the secondary, I don't want it to have a fill, I want it to have a stroke instead, and I'm going to keep it as one pixel and add the same colour. I'm also going to change the font colour to that red. Okay, so that's our secondary button. And for our tertiary, I'm also going to change the font colour to red, but I'm going to get rid of this fill entirely, and now it's just that text. So what can we do? We can create multiple components here. So if we go back up to our component thing, we now have this little drop down because we've got multiple selected. Clicking that, we can click create multiple components. Like that. So now we've got multiple components and back to our assets, 
now we can see all those components in here. Let's just drag them in quickly. There we go. And like before, if we were to change any of the settings, it would change them. Let's pick something that actually shows up. It would actually change them globally like that. Okay, so I'm going to undo that again and show you one more thing. Now we've got our components here, we can actually clean up this uh, in our design system a bit by combining as variants. Because these are all technically the same component, just different variants of that component, we should be combining them into one component under variants. So here we go, let's click this button on the right. There we go. Now we can see these have been highlighted with uh, this border and if we look at our assets panel, we can now see we actually only have one component. So where have the other two gone? Well, if we drag that button in, we can now have a look. We've got this new property one under here. We've got primary, secondary, tertiary. So that's a really nice way of creating a button that is scalable. Um, and we can control it from a master component over here and we can also have different variants of that component and that's a really really nice way of working with UI and this will save you a lot of time when you're working on your screens so I hope you really like that video um, please like and subscribe and leave a comment below with any feedback I'll be creating more videos as we go um, so yeah make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next video thanks for watching